Hi, welcome back. Okay, now for the second one here, the second video of it, we have, we first we did that on the dry background. This time we'll change the background color. This time I added a little bit more black to it. Same type of panel and everything, a big panel, uh, MDF uh, panel, uh, 14 by 18 here. And then I added a little bit more black to the color here. And uh, which, uh, you know, with that yellow makes it a little, it's like a dark gray green here. Not real dark. It's uh, about a value uh, seven, maybe. Uh, just a little bit maybe leaning to six but most likely seven here and I put it on and then lightly sanded the background uh, with 180 grit sandpaper and again we'll follow the techniques and everything that we did in uh, this particular book here and we'll get going this time in the last lesson of the book there I streaked a little color into the background and so I want to show you some of that so I'm just gonna my dirty brush here from the last painting here and I'm going to take a little bit of uh, my thalo blue now that's a blue green so if i add white to that you'll see it as a as a blue green which is a pretty color but i want this more towards a blue violet this time so i'm going to add a little bit of my uh, red violet to this and uh, oh that's kind of pretty it's a little too much red violet just a it's a pretty kind of purpley color there let's pick up and get some big old dollop of white into that that's pretty We'll add some extender to this, the extender medium. This slows down the drying time. Now I'm gonna paint uh, the flowers kind of soft this time. So, well, not completely soft, but we're gonna go for a certain amount of elegance, which means we do wanna keep our casual streaking down to uh, in some control. So I'm gonna really mix this up. So the color stays, um, the color stays a little not as streaky it's going to streak onto the background here and i want to take it off to the side here a bit but i don't want in many times when i paint casual backgrounds and i do this 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 vignetting of color like this which is uh you know i love to do this vignetting of color i'm keeping it more elegant looking by keeping this value these values very close together so the viewer will see more of a tonal change into this especially as it dries here so the value of the two are pretty close um, they'll see some tone change of it here but uh, that'll keep the elegance to it if, if I get too streaky here it gets a real casual it's beautiful I love it but uh, we won't have that same type of effect okay so now that area is uh, all working there now I'll use this into softening some of my colors and stuff as well and this time we'll we'll take some of our yellow oxide. Let's take a little bit of our pine green. We'll just toss this right into some of this blue. We get a nice green color here. We can use that as a base for, I'm gonna have some flowers coming down from the base here, down into this area here, and then kind of working up and through. I'm gonna let some of that uh, some of the blue show through, but uh, we'll work some coming up that way and some coming this way here. Slight angle pulling up this way, growing up this way and uh, heavier down through here where I'm going to have some of these other flowers. Flower colors. We could go with some of our beautiful whites. Whites and pinks are beautiful. Um, yellows, you could go soft lavenders, peach colors. All of those work. Uh, you know, onto a background that's like this. Um, and so if you don't know, what I do is I take the colors that I have already. Here's my green, and I'll take a little bit of my red violet and a little bit of my blue and stuff together here. Makes a beautiful gray into this background. We also had a little yellow, so we'll add a little yellow oxide. Makes a beautiful gray. This is a real soft, we'll add some of this uh, blue to it, a real soft gray. This makes it a beautiful color to do a little sketching and idea building here. So maybe we'll we'll say, okay, we'll put a big, kind of an open rose right here. And uh, let's reach up. Let's grow some of our roses up and out and around here into our composition here. We'll grow up, maybe get a little smaller, maybe push that one up a little higher there. Up like that. Well, they're kind of in line, aren't they? We don't want to do that. So let's take that back just a bit and uh, push this one up, maybe right up in there. That'll work. 
Now, I'll show you how we clean that all up there a little in just a minute, but you don't have to do too much to it because we, uh, and I, um, we, the colors, the values are very close together. So, so here go our big one here, and that one's going to go up, and then we'll grow out a bit, maybe have a small one turn out like that. So we'll have our two main anchor roses and grow up there like this. Now, let's um, take some cool color, maybe a little some red violet with a little burnt sienna. And that helps warm it just a bit so it's not quite so cool. Let's go ahead and paint what we know, which we know from our series, from our educational series, that we have to have the three circles of the rose here. If we want this rose to open up, we'll drop it down just a bit more here. But we'll put the slightly cool color on it. That's the opening of it. Then the bowl of the rose and out onto the reaching petals here. Let's darken up this other one here, down here, so we'll get it a little darker. Now I'm going to paint with a lot of paint this time as well, so... We'll get this one darker down here. Remember what we do, we incorporate those, get the greens going into the rows and the reds out into the background a bit. Get those colors incorporated. Let's get some of that nice dark right down here where that rose is gonna open up. Here, like that. That'll be pretty. Here. Let's, uh, this one will turn off this way a bit. Let it go out here like that. And this one will grow up maybe over this way just a touch. There we go. We'll push it down, pull some of that out there like that. And uh, we'll have this other smaller bud or so right here. Maybe even up a little higher. There, like that. That'll work. That'll work. And we'll put some leaves and stuff going out. The other thing that you can do is out into your background like this, is you can just model some of this color. Let's take some of our blue and stuff through that too as well. And just model some of this color out here. Use your paper towel just a touch to soften some of that out. And it puts it, what it does is it'll give the impression of roses into the very back back there so that will uh that will work pretty well now i like that blue that's up there let's get just a little bit more of our thalo and white and i'm going to restreak through that area up there just to push a little bit more of that blue back up there we might even leave it slightly on the violet side here but i gotta i don't want it to be um super streaky so I've got it because our whole goal here is to keep that soft so I'm going to mix it up pretty well here so we'll pull that through yeah that's pretty and it gives a little more color there a little different color as well let's pull that down sometimes when I'm doing this this is another good technique is I'll just pull that right through and in and out of the flowers like that that gives a a real wispy edge to the flowers like that and it's pretty it's uh it's pretty and it's different and that's you know that's the that's the job of the artist as we look for some of those differences and stuff that we can have now okay so not bad for uh right into the painting right away let's get into let's get our green out here let's take some uh Burnt Sienna, those are two of my favorite uh, combination colors to put together right there. It gives me that because I can really control the warmth on it. And, and also adding some blue over here really allows you to go real dark or slightly warm with it. And the blue will appear slightly cooler. But let's get some contrast here. Let's get some contrast out. Push this out. And in like this. But that dry background that we're working with this time um, really uh, causes some different uh, feelings to it than what we've done before with uh, some of the other ones. 
So we'll just push that, like the idea of a stem coming through there like that. Just kind of boop, boop, do it. And let's push out some color here. Just work that in and just movement. Just We're just looking for some, that's all we're doing is just looking for some movement. So don't play around too much. You notice I, I, I put it on and then I move out and move out. And, um, you know, it's because if you play around, it'll all become one color. So you can't, you can't stop for too long. Let's uh, drop some heavy-duty stems off to this edge here. Drop like this. Just use the chisel of the brush and just pull out like that. You can, uh, like I said before, you can put some more burnt sienna into it and streak a little burnt sienna, which is one of my favorites to use on the stems. And uh, I will kind of like put extra little, little tiny touch of it there to make it look like a, a little sticker or a thorn or something there. Like that. We'll push some of that color out in here. It's pretty with a little of that burnt sienna in there that plays up against some of this warmth. I mean the cool of the blue of with this warmth. It's nice. Let a little bit of that blue show through there. Try not to paint too much. Just work that through like that big soft brush like this you can paint backwards and negative paint we don't need to do too much negative painting yet but you paint like that and that does some of that negative painting like you could come right in here like this and push in the edge and then just soften that out like that just get some of that green movement like back colors going in there that works pretty nice okay so I could continue on with that big brush and it'll give me a, a lot of soft looks. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is move over here to my number 10, like we used in the last one here. And I'll start painting some of these. And so right now I have the rose there is very pretty, but it's kind of cool. We'll do kind of a red pinky one. It's kind of cool. So I'll need to warm some of it up. So I'm going to take some Napsol Red Light. Let's come right into the front of that with some Napsol Red Light and some white. That's a nice warm color. Let's push that back. Get rid of that stem right there. Let's put some warm color right into the fronts of our roses here. That will cause them to round up a little bit more. We'll get uh, the size of this one up a little bit bigger. There. And this one here. Nice warm color. There, like that. And out. Let's put a little warmth up here. That will be very soft, but we'll do that anyway. Let's get a little bit of warmth onto this one that we're going to push back behind this one. Into the very back and bottom part of the painting there. Now, let's put touch of the naphtha red light and the red violet together so it's like a medium temperature here let's push some of that into the center of the rose that'll break up some of the red violet color there and we'll use the red violet to really preserve our dark cool colors push some of that into the shadow here the bottom side and the shadow of that rose. There we go, like that. Now, you know, there's a lot of times, you, I mean, you could, you know, I, you could add some yellows and stuff like that, but you can get a rainbow really quick too. So, you know, it, it's kind of, we want to model the color up enough that we get some nice temperature interest and stuff and maybe shift it to a few other things. But, like with a red rose, red rose, you know, you have to paint it very dark or it's going to go pink. And I want these more like white pink with the tints of warm and cool. So I want these really actually kind of white. Um, 
but we don't want to get a, too much yellows and stuff like that into it. It'll start looking like a rainbow. So it's those we can add later, but right now, maybe stay away from that just a bit. Let's uh, go in and, and let's start our big, our big forward boom petals here. We'll start building some color, just like we did with the last painting. Start building some color here, right up like that. Let's take some soft and go to the outside edge here and pull in. Just and you can use the edge technique there to pull that in there if you want. Build a little light edge and pull it in. Get that uh, light color out there. And you can use your finger to soften some of that right into the blues. But go more pink, maybe pink here with a little of that red violet. Let's do some pink color here. Pull in. It's just setting the outside back edge of the rose here. And what I might want to have here. There's some of the just ideas of movement there. And uh, let's come to the front here. Also, where I might want to have the petal coming out. Build up some of that color there. You, you need to have a certain amount of color right up in here to build it, especially we want these, to, these flowers to just like jump off the surface, which means they have to have some color up in here. They have to get some lights up in here. Now with the last technique, we painted it first with a light underneath, and that helped you build it. So this time you don't have that, so you're going to have to build quite a bit here to get this rose to come off of the surface here, or come off the, the background, to really jump off. You're going to have to build it quite a bit. So let's build around, get some of the movement in here, like that. Let's get a little movement here, coming around there. Coming around, and again, I'll I'll paint I'll overpaint some movement like this, just like I did on the the other ones, and I'll I'll take it down with some dark after I get some of that movement going. I'm just and I always remember here on the rose that the smallest petals are in the center. So as I'm coming down like this, I'm getting smaller and smaller and around. Now that I get some nice movement through, then I take a little bit of my red violet and natural red light here. And I use it to come around and lift off some of the color and just kind of form some petals here. It's almost like negative painting on it as well. Here. And sometimes I will just take this around like this and push. Now that I establish some of that movement, I'll blur that movement. I call it blurring. Um, sometimes you can take a big brush or just take this brush and pull it across like that. And see the blur that you get inside of that right there? That just adds so much. And uh, so we'll blur that. But we'll leave that for just a second. I'm going to come back to the front here really put on my my light front petal here big contrast curve this down and around like that that's the big big contrast petal we want that light that boom there's the light boom there's the side petal there and you get this color once you get enough color onto the surface it it's you get that blurry look to the stroke when you take it, but you have to get that color and build and build and build and build to get there. You have to build a lot. Let's take a little pink, just soften some of that just a touch like that. Back through. See, I'll just soften a 
a little bit of my dark right back in there again. It gives me a nice base of lots of paint there. And I can come back in there and go boom like that. Set that stroke in. Lift off a little bit where I don't want it. Like that. Maybe a bigger stroke right out here. Like that. Boom, boom. Take that back. Oh, I don't want that white out there. You can put some green in your brush and just take it right out. That's the nice thing about painting lots of paint. So here we'll set out some edge here. To that, let's go back to a little bit of our reds and just kind of stroke right along the edge of that, soften some of that out. Like that. Gives us a nice big beautiful rose here in the front here maybe we'll uh, open up the centers here let's not go like that let's open up the center so I need to uh, and I can grab some right on the a little heavier onto the side if I want to pull some petals in and give some you know some direct movement to the petal edge like this make a and, and really define the petal edge you just use it like that with the corner this is a technique we used in a well, I guess it was volume two or three and we called it petal edges defining petal edges is one of the techniques I use I'll build this one up here incorporate that right into that one just some soft movement there. Yeah. There, right down into that big rose. Let's use some edge here. There, like that. And maybe I'll lift off to the edge of that one. Yeah. But sometimes when you're out to these little transparent edges like that, that little edging technique just looks nice. Just looks really pretty. Makes it look very sheer and transparent uh, type of petals. You can add a lot of them in there. As many as you want. There, like that. That's pretty. Let some of these just kind of fade away over here for right now. We have that other other one to put up in, in there, but let's paint some lighter color back. So I'll get that lighter pink, warmer pink, more color of that right in there. And some nice movement to it, maybe some in and out movement here as well. So I had some nice side to side, but maybe some in and out movement there as well. Take a big old strike of color. Boom, let's just put that color right in there and decide if we want to pull out that this, and I'm lifting off that extra white, see? Lifting off that extra white. There, like that, another little petal. Kind of pretty, or maybe bring this bowl down a little further. Just move, just create the movement, and then just because underneath there's a shadow, then you can just lift off some of that, and you reveal that shadow. And so all you're painting is really the movement there, of that. There, like that. That's pretty different way very thick thick white there and you just wipe the brush and just pull through like that and you'll lift off some of that extra white there maybe pull out just a bit Strike right across there. See, it's just nice big light, white. Pull out just a bit. That 
that's pretty good. But one of the things is I've got them just kind of like stair-stepped right here. So let me show you this. I, I never mind doing this. And this is something I do actually quite a lot is I, I'll step back. This will take my green right back into that edge right here. And I'm just going to redirect my movement here again. Back out here like this. Maybe take that green in just a bit more again. And sometimes I'll, I'll switch back out since I got quite a bit of paint up there now. I'll switch back out and, and do a little petal edge like that. I just felt that it was a little too a little too stair stepped there. So that'll give a nice pretty little edge there. Here like that. That's a pretty little look to that one. Let's build the bottom of this bowl coming down just a bit more like that. That's pretty. And maybe a light little edge right there. Come in there. So that gives a, a, a different look to it. So it's I got rid of actually just one layer of petals in there. And that gives a different look to that front of that rose. Kind of pretty. Let's um take that light pink and come back in here and define down our shapes one more time. We got the movement in there, so you could really just use the, the chisel edge of the brush here and just kind of draw a few petals coming down in because you already have the movement there on that rose. So once you have the movement painted, and sometimes when you're doing a thick painting like this, it takes you a while to get that, that movement going. But once you have that movement in there and enough paint on there, then it's quite easy to to uh, get some more uh, petals in there. Just, just use the edge of the brush just to kind of push them in there. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let's take, let me show you here, let's take some of this dark green here. Get some more blue and pine and uh, Pine green and blue and some burnt sienna. You can even cool it down to that real dark, adding a little bit of that red violet that we did in the last one. That red violet and that blue and that pine green is super dark. It's one of the and you can use that to come in here as an ultimate type of contrasting shadow. Like if you really want to boom, here comes that that rose that's gonna play the contrast right there that's really nice you could contrast like right up in here negative paint in here that edge of that rose just a little bit of that contrast there let's dump a little bit right down in here yes that negative painting just pops that edge out like that see that Let's drop just a little bit right in here. Got a little, got a little picked up a little edge of white there. There we go. That pops that out. Now we'll, and I like that. We might change it a little bit, but I like that. I'm gonna go a little bit dark right in here and just redefine come out here a little bit with some red violet just a little soft movement there for the center of that rose and uh, maybe take just a touch of that down into this side of that rose which will uh, give you a little more contrast a little more shadow side here so almost like negative painting with it too on this side of the rose and it will give you that that uh, contrast of those petals and it will give you that cool color the shadow side of the rose here there we go so a little different way there just soften that this way a bit. 
that's good. Let's come back up and work on these others here. And we'll take some of this light color. We have to build the light again, the light and the warm here. Let's build the front of that one up. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to paint a rose like this out of position without the others in there. Really should say something about that. It's just it's something I don't normally do. I usually get some of the colors out and around because once you get some of these colors, you build some of these colors out and around like this, and you start building up the, the, the paint that you're going to use to paint these other roses. All of a sudden, the color starts carrying out more, and you see it more. And, you know, that sometimes, you know, like if you're bothered painting a rose, like it keeps looking wrong, keeps looking wrong, probably because you painted on it too long. We call that perspective of painting. Um, and I'm just going to take a little more of my red and so here. Uh, we call it perspective in painting and if you've painted on something for too long you start the eye starts to lose some perspective for it so you need to get back and um get some uh you know put some colors on some other things and get the perspective back to your eye and looking at other things and then you'll come back and you'll see where your problem is on that flower so that is a, a it is a, a natural fact it happens and it happens to me quite a bit so, and that's why, so as, as soon as I start building these light colors, because it's the light colors that you're really seeing in this painting, as soon as I start to build some of these light colors out like this, all of a sudden this other rose starts to calm down just a bit more. Yeah, it's still, it's still, uh, still contrasty, which I wanted, but it starts to calm down just a bit more. But we gotta build some colors here first. Gotta build some of these colors out here. Big strokes, just light pinks. And uh, as I'm out here to the warm side, I'm putting in some more naphtha red light. As I'm down here in the cool side, I'm putting in some more uh, red violet. There. I build those things. Red violet. Build some of our colors. That's kind of nice. Make these a little more pinky. There. Good mix of color coming through. And we'll build the light up to the front. Now when we start to use light strokes like this, we just don't want to... Uh, make it and I'll take it out with a little pink there we just don't want to make it lighter than what we have right in here this is going to control our painting here today so we'll always keep our eye on that and you can come out here put up a little light on the edge and use that edging technique if you want let's pick up a little edge and just draw that little edge there, like that. Pull that out. Drop some right in here. There. Let's build that up a bit. There. And I'm just, you notice I'm just going through tons of white. Because I'm building, building, building light, light, light color. And once you get that color on there, then all you have to do is just kind of streak through it a couple times and you'll get a light petal there. It's kind of pretty. There. I can pull through this and just to transparent that just a bit. A little more light. There. Pretty. When you just take that thick white and you just stroke that on there like that and just let it stay. It's hard, you mean, because you want to just touch it and touch it, but it's prettiest if you don't. And you just let it stay here. And I let that just kind of fade away to that side there. Yeah. 
Take that away here. Take this back. Yeah, like that. You can use the edges like that to kind of start drawing up some of the outside edges here of this rose. Yeah. And a little more light right up here. And I just kind of undulate the petals here so they go out and reach out different, you know, different amounts and stuff. And, but we don't want to do it as much as this other one here. But the other thing I want is um, a little light and cool together here just to add a little movement here into the center. And like I say, if you get too much, you just pick up some dark and go back. But we just want to give the idea, this is much, much simpler movement than what we did on the, uh, the last one. So just give a, put on a little light side, a little dark there, and then get out of there. Just because we don't need that much there. Just get out of there. And we'll put a bit there. Let's, this is, a, needs to have a little bit of something right in there. There we go. An extra little light of a petal or something. Movement coming out. Nice thick white paint there. Yeah, like that. That's nice. You can lift off just a bit of that just to reveal a little bit of that bowl shadow there or come back in just chisel right through that right there and that'll push that bowl thinner right there there we go that's kind of nice that works but this edge right here is a little flat so a little thick white right out like that a little farther out probably help you could also do a little negative paint right there Let's just draw a little bit of thick white right there. Boom. Put a little white right up there. There, like that. Boy, that thick paint painting is really nice. And that dry background. Me really get a lot of nice looks to it. Just some light pink here, just to add some movement there. Different type of rose, a little bit of movement here to the center. You notice I move very fast on these because this I've already got my main one done here, so the other ones I'm just kind of moving fast here just like that but working on the dry background is uh, gives you a whole new uh, feeling of your painting it uh, you know I do uh, quite a bit in, uh, in the in the book there it's showing some very different ways of, of uh, doing it on the dry especially those that have been painting through the other uh, volumes of it um, you, uh, you're now going to be doing everything onto a dry background. So everything is, you know, it's, but even like a, when I'm doing this one here, it's transparent. I'm using a lot of, I'm using a lot of, uh, uh, paint and it's the paint that gives you that depth and interest and stuff. So it's a, it's a good one to practice taking just a lot of paint here and just stroking it out, working on it like that. There we go. Each rose will look different, and that's what I'm looking for. And I like some of that darker green that shows up back behind that there. Let's take just a lighter pink and build up a, a little bit of an idea of a rosebud there. A little bit more light. Yeah. That is a rosebud. You might want to put a little chisel of a petal there. 
like that. Just kind of says, there it is. Now sometimes I'll take some of this blue that I have out here onto the painting. Let's reconstitute some of that up, put a little extender, a little more white into that here. Little touches of that blue, let's get a little bit lighter. It shouldn't never be as high as light as the highlight, but it uh, gives you a nice little little dose of that color. And it's and it's a good thing to have in roses. You know, some of the soft color of your back, of your sky or something in there. See, it gives a, pulls that down, gives a, a harmony to it, to the flower, which is really pretty. And I'll do that in those lessons in the book as well. Yeah. really kind of pretty. Put it on the shadow side there. It's cool side of the rose. And if you hit over some of the highlights, just go back and reset some of your lights. Here. Now let's come back out to the front. That's kind of nice. Let's come down and darken this down a bit. And use just a little bit down here. Still light, but you can gray this down a bit. Get a little green into that red and it'll gray it down so it's not quite so bright. It gives you this soft kind of dusty rose color. Here. Grays it down so a little green goes right into your red. Beautiful harmony. Raise that right on down. Then you can lighten it up and it'll you won't get as bright because it's uh, got some gray. Strike a color and just kind of move your brush or your finger around here in the shape of the bowl. Like that. Yeah, like that. There we go. Here. I'm going to put some edges onto this, but not too many because I want this to be underneath that one. So we want to have, actually, we want to have some of this green or grayed color right up underneath that one there just the idea of these sitting what we call formal together formal means they're touching each other so push those together like that there we go there we go just a little idea of that and then build, but don't get it as light as the front of the one sitting on top here. Just a, just a little bit of white and keep it mostly grayed down here. Softer, grayer. There we go, something like that. Nice, soft. A little bit of soft movement back here. Just push your finger around mostly into the shape. You don't need very much on it. There we go. Just like that. And then I'll take a little bit more white up here on the brighter side here. And we'll just state that petal right back up on top of this one. And so I'll put the edge on there and maybe I'll pull, so I don't lose that shadow, I'll pull from the shadow out here. And just put some white right up on the edge there. And you can restate that shadow. Remember we did that with negative painting there. 
you can restate that one again there. I used a little edge of the brush and kind of just put a bit of that shadow there, like that, above that. So that one sits down quieter down there. Let's put just an idea, kind of grade. Maybe there's one right out here, right onto this side. So we'll just put a little light color back in there. Just the idea, a little grade, soft. Not too much, you see, I just move it around. And that's, you know, when I first started painting, it was like, God, that's really hard to do that because you want to paint it, you know, you want to get in there and paint it perfect and everything. I'm just following the shape of the rose, the round part of the inside, the bowl, and then out and around, pulling out and stuff for the reaching petals, and that's all. But I do it just very quickly with the brush here. And I don't, I know I don't, I only need a couple of petals there to, to show someone that there's a petal, that there's a rose there. I don't need all kinds of stuff there. And whatever I do put out there should be kind of great. So if I decide to put a little bit of center, and I, I feel that the center is what really makes the rose. But see, I just do that and I make, I get like a center of the rose. Um, that's all it needs. That's all it needs. Let's get back. Let's get back to our pine green burnt sienna here. Maybe a touch of our blue. Because we're liking those colors. There. And uh, let's go back in and we'll do a... Let's We can gray that up too with some of our reds, some of our blues, something like this. Find some nice softer colors here. Yeah, that's kind of nice. And find... Uh, through the design here, we'll add a few more um, little uh, touches here. We can add a, a couple of like little septals to a, a rosebud that's out here. We can be we can use soft greens like this to add the shape of one or two little leaves coming out like that. You know, like we showed you in some of the other lessons, you can do uh, more shape to the leaves. If you want to have more shape to the leaves. Okay, so. And then we'll just get some movement here. And we'll pull some of this. Maybe there's a little bit more shape to these leaves right out here. Coming out this way. Right up here, just very, very simple. You can pull back to, to blur those edges like we did with the last ones that, on a few of those. Maybe you wanna blur those edges just a touch here gray some out more p light pink into that green just kind of grays it out really pretty makes real dusty greens there like that we can uh, go back through and look for some contrast. Let's put some right in here, right in between the flowers. And that contrast, not as much as we have up here, but see that will pull the viewer's eye right back up this way. We can put a little bit of negative painting right in here and just pull those together. Like that's something right in there. Boom. There goes that contrast boom right like that and so you want as you move out away from here you want everything to get softer so gray up that that dark so it's not as heavy but you see a little bit of that color coming out like right there like that boy I loved how I pushed on that it made like a little vein line that's great you just always push in the shapes of the flowers because that can happen. I mean, the shape of the leaves because that can happen like that. You can shape just like that and, and create like a little leaf just by pushing one side, 
pushing the other side and you leave a little of that dark in that center all of a sudden you have a very casual leaf here it's very pretty like that you have to decide do you want some um you know do you want to add uh some light greens to it you can do that the one that i did with the little bees and everything i didn't add any i don't think it needed it i mean i added a little but i don't you don't go add a ton of it i did with the bees in the book so there's a, if you haven't painted through that series of the that book you should try some of the try some of the lessons because especially those of you that really want to learn how to paint roses I use all different kinds of techniques and because that's what they are they are the painting flowers is and roses is just a set of techniques and you as the artist have to kind of uh, find those techniques now I add a little more burnt sienna over here you know young rose leaves young rose leaves are um, a little longer narrower but they're also kind of orange here so you will kind of put a young or slightly more orange a little more burnt sienna into some of those here that gives you a, a few of these that A nice shape here that uh, vary the color of, or in give you a different element. You will put some of that right out in here. Give you a different colored element here. It's kind of pretty. Now you may we may want to put in a lighter one right up here, and then we have to look if we add that green. You then what you got to do is you got to add it through the painting in a few other spots. It doesn't have to be as heavy, but you should carry the color if you make it. I always tell my students, I don't mind if you add a color, but if you make a color, carry the color. That's the rule. So let's put in a little light green right there. Maybe one right up underneath here. Just put some green coming out like that. Let's lighten up the green. Yellow it here just a touch. Lighten it up. Let's put a little bit more of a light on it. That'll go well with that rose. But it, you know, I don't want to, you don't want to overdo it so much that it, it, it holds your eye here because you want your eye to travel up. So that's one of the things I'm watching. And you see if I put too much light or too much edge on this leaf, it'll stop the eye. I can bring the eye back by putting a little bit of that light green. You can make the viewer's eye follow it up a bit by putting just a touch of that into a few other areas here. Moving through. Maybe a bit of it right here. There. That's kind of nice. There, and you can do a light uh, vein line or a darker vein line, depending on the leaf. There. And just pull out. Always remind your leaf here. Always like you know they're they're uh, they're wider at the base and up to the tip up there. They narrow down, and then pull out at little forty five degree angles on either side, and uh, you know then just come back and like here I'll hit the shadow here. I like to hit that shadow there underneath that petal edge. You know that sets the leaf underneath there. But if I have room there, I mean, if I think, okay, dark is going to be it, then I'll just slide out a little dark there onto the leaf. And paint it back and forth. It's like I do with birds and all the other kinds of things when I do feathering on birds and stuff, is I paint back and forth several times here to uh, 
so I get the, the look, especially in the center of interest. Other places of it, no, I move very fast, and, uh, you know, I get done and get out of there. But in the center of interest, you can work a little bit more. It might be nice to have a, a leaf right here that will help push that one rose back farther, and we'll put some contrast on it with some... Uh, some light color there and you can see right now it's about the same color as that the, the same value as the light on that rose and so it's wanting to it's wanting to, to it's not pushing it back yet but the second I get some of this light then I'll then touch up into the front again as well here it'll shut that rose back down just a bit so then we'll touch some of that right up here and we know we got some of that color moving around the painting here. That's a bit light right there. So let's push it and soften it back. So you get a feeling of the color, but you don't get the color. There we go. That's kind of nice. Might push that right into this one as well. There, that's kind of a fun little, uh, fun little painting, dying away, going up there, starting at the base, and then dying away and going back up as it goes down there. Now, it's, you know, do you want to add more back up there? I like to have some negative space, you know, kind of filling that up, and so that design moves up pretty nice for me, and uh, I like that, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to play with that uh, too much more. You could do a little bit, you know, that this is where it starts to get a little dangerous, you know, do you want to do some more, you know, on these type of leaves. Um, burnt sienna is just a, such a pretty color, and, you know, you could get some burnt sienna a little bit more in there, and like I said, if you make that color, move it, and you might want to add just a touch of green with that, and just let that color pick up a little bit here and there in the rest of your painting in a few things showing up because then that color carries through your painting so and I don't think I do any any more than that uh, just to see the color a little bit and then get out of there you know little things like taking some of your base blue and um, opening up air spaces in your in your painting or so very nice and so very different. Just take some of your, you can negative paint with like the blue that we used up there. You can come in like this and d deposit that blue right back up in here again. Now I started doing this a few years ago in some of my paintings and they, it is so pretty. It's such a nice thing to do because it adds the air back into the, the negative space back into your painting. And see that rose now plays against that little airy space there, and um, it's a nice it's a nice feeling. So you you don't get you know sometimes I get very heavy with my colors, and then sometimes I come back in, and uh, I'll I'll put in specifically some of my negative, my blue, my color, back in again, so that those things stay uh, softer, and you see some of that. And what it does is it lifts the rose forward, but it also adds some uh, air, some air, some interest to it. The negative of painting that back out. Let's put some of that right here, and then we'll stop playing. Let's push some of that right back in here into some of that green. Just a little bit. Put a little more red in that. A little more white. Touch, 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 more blue. You can save some of your color, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same color. It can be, you know, it can be a little different. It doesn't have to be the same color. That's the beautiful thing about casual painting like this is it doesn't have to be the same color. Just let that fade off there like that. Let's put a little bit of that air right in here, right in between that that leaf. Or you might pick up a touch of it right in here, there. And that's kind of pretty. See, it just 
opens up and airs up the design a bit more. So it's a, kind of a neat technique to use as, as well. And I do that quite a bit in some of the others coming back and back painting that through. I did a um, uh, casual garden and garden and um, garden impressions and stuff of uh, you know, books that are out there. And I use that technique a lot in that very, very casual paintings. You'll see those. You can go visit some of those on our online store and on Amazon. All Amazon carries all our books and stuff now and everything. So, you know. Hope you enjoyed it. I had a good time painting these with you. And for, like I say, for more of those lessons and stuff like that, you can go see us on Amazon or go see us on Jansen Art Store. That's where the largest uh, number of uh, lessons and stuff are, are on there. Uh, any of the colors or anything like that you need. You can visit us on Facebook and on the social networks. Just put in Jansen Art Studio. You'll see us there. Um, and, uh, if, you know, we'd love to be talking with you if you're working and painting and have, need some ideas with some of the helps, uh, some techniques. We have our online social networking that's there. Um, you just you drop us a line and we'll point you in the right direction. If you want some online classes, we have our Jansen Art Online now where we come in and we paint live together, answering questions back and forth. We're having a lot of fun with those. And that's JansenArtOnline.com, JansenArtOnline.com. And we have a lot of stuff going there. We're going through uh, all kinds of uh, things all the time, birds and flowers and landscapes and so on and so forth. So uh, look to some of those other lessons too. I had a good time painting with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you, if you don't have that book, go out and get that book. And there's a bunch of others out there. There's a whole series. And it starts out with volume one, just telling you the basics of a rose. If you want to learn how to rose, paint, really paint a rose, get that volume one. And it'll tell you the basics of a rose the shape, the shape following roses, and then build on these. And uh, after that volume one, some of these other things will uh, will come clear, okay? Thanks very much. I look forward to seeing you at some of our, letter, our other lessons. And uh, as always, write us if you have a question, and we'll be happy to answer it. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.